Well, today is the Kano State Local Government elections, and a uh, high court in Kano has directed that the state's independent electoral commission should proceed with the local government elections. Of course, you know the various build up to that conversation. Justice Sunusi Maji of the Kano State High Court issued the order following a case filed by the State Electoral Commission against the APC and 13 others. Now, let's have uh, conversations with our, co our correspondent, Sadiq Ilyasu, who is our correspondent in Kano State. Good morning, Sadiq. Um, it's been quite a number of uh, back and forth before we got here. Um, how, how, describe to us the build up to this point where we are right now. Well, yesterday there was a spree of uh, court rulings. Uh, a federal high court gave a ruling earlier on Tuesday that um, the police shouldn't even take part in the election and uh, they called all the leadership of the handset as illegal because they found them to be um, partisan. That's what they said. And secondly, um, just like what you said earlier, the state high court also give uh, a go ahead to to, to the Kano um, Independent Electoral Commission uh, to, to continue with the election. And this is exactly what is happening. And another court order was also issued yesterday, uh, which disqualified all the NNPP candidates, both the local government and the council, the chairman and the local government uh, candidates. All of them were disqualified by the courts. But despite all this, uh, the, the Kano State Independent Electoral Commission is going ahead with its uh, election, as you can see today. You can see behind me, the election is going on. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no any presence of the police since they said they are going to comply with the earlier order by the uh, Federal High Court. But as, as you can see, there is a Tarota, there is um, uh, members of the Hizba Commission, there is also some... Um, vigilante, they are the ones providing the security. And as I can tell you now, uh, the election is going on smoothly. There is no any crisis, no any hit. And uh, also, you know, yesterday there was an, uh, uh, a statement by the Commissioner of uh, Information which restricted movement uh, in the state. And to some extent, a lot of people, market shops are not open and people are not even moving around except for those who are going for the elections. This is exactly what is happening right now in Kano. Back to you. How, how do you see that, the, all of that build-up, affecting the turnout of voters? I'm glad that we, you will st still talk about the details of the election itself. But how do you see all of those, uh, one court order after another court order, and all of that. What, how do you see it affecting the turnout of voters for the election? Well, it is definitely uh, affecting the turnout. And, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, in Kano, because of its volatility, a lot of people chose not to come out, not because they wanted to go and cast their vote, but because they are scared of what might happen. But despite that, a lot of people are coming out. Here, usually, it's usually uh, a polling unit where a lot of people gather to cast their vote. But today, you can see only a few people uh, were here to cast their vote. And we went around uh, to other places where we see a better turnout than, than this. We saw a better turnout at Salantar Ward, uh, where they are yet to begin the election, uh, but they are already sorting out their boxes and other election materials for them to continue with the election. Definitely, the build-up will definitely affect the turnout. Back to you. Sadiq, um, normally when elections take place, we normally hear complaints about um, electoral officers not arriving on time, materials not arriving on time. What happened in the case of uh, Kano? Yeah, in some polling units, as I can tell you now, up to now, there is no any sign of any uh, election materials, no sign of any uh, election officials. But what I can tell you is that um, in the centers where they are responsible for the distribution, uh, all the people are there to collect the materials. I think what I'm suspecting is that because of the build-up to the election, uh, all the hurdles that happened, 
this might uh, cause the delay that we are seeing today. But here uh, in Taroni, most of the polling units have begun uh, with, uh, with the process of the election. Back to you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Sadiq. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm, I'm sure we'll get back to you shortly. John Ebikeseye Mutu joins us this morning to talk about this local government <laughs> laws and all of that. He joins us from Abuja Studio. He's National Coordinator, Democracy Vanguard. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Mutu. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Uh, this, let's, let's begin with this canal example. A slew of court orders, some of them actually conflicting with each other. But yesterday we had a lawyer in Kano, in our Kano studio, who was lamenting why the judiciary would allow itself to be as is being um, you know, used, so to speak. Uh, that, that, those were his thoughts. What, what do you make of it? On the one hand, one ruling is saying no elections, another one, another one is saying yes elections. What's your, what's your understanding? Yeah, I think uh, I have a fear for this country. The judiciary is supposed to be uh, a problem solver for this country, but gradually the judiciary is now becoming an albatross in this country. And if properly, if not checked, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, it started in uh, Rivers in recent times. We thought it was a joke. Now it has moved to Kano. And if not arrested quickly, it will you know, become an issue across the country. When the, the judiciary cannot regulate itself, when the judiciary courts of concurrent jurisdiction give conflicting orders, nobody obeys those orders, <coughs> nobody takes them seriously, then it means that people will continue to resort to self-help, and that is a big danger for our democracy. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, once a court gave judgment, everybody is bound by it. The only thing you can do is to appeal that judgment. But today, what we see around is judgment is given, nobody takes it seriously, to the point that even the Supreme Court will give judgments. Nobody takes it seriously. It is not implemented. So where are we going? Our democracy is truly in danger. And I said this is quickly checked. We may see this, you know, impeding the 2027 20, 20, uh, general elections. And maybe people will now start resorting to self-help. And that will be chaos. That will be a crisis across the country. So I will call on Mr. President. I will call on the NJC, the NBA, and the judiciary to quickly put its house in order before they truncate this democracy. John, why do you think some states are so against local government elections anyway? Uh, I think uh, it's more self-serving than altruistic reasons. It's parochial. And I've said this several times. When you see governors who were governors at the state who were against local government autonomy, they leave office and get to the National Assembly, they become advocates of local government autonomy. Even while they are out of office, even if they are not in the National Assembly, if you see their commentary, it's different from what they used to preach when they were in the states, uh, when they were uh, in the Elms of Affairs at their various states. So it's not based on any altruistic reasoning, but more or less parochial reasoning. And when you hear their own lines of thought, when you hear their defense, sometimes it's laughable. So I think it's more or less there is something that we are not being told. There is something within the local government system that government or state government benefit from that they don't want to let go. And it's really a pity. But th there has been a court ruling that um, the local government should be autonomous. So, I mean, by extension, for me, that means local government elections should be held and then the, the, the uh, local governments are autonomous. Yes, I think the judgment was given as far back as July, and I do know that uh, there have been negotiations, there have been consultations. At the initial stage, what we heard was that maybe there was a period of moratorium given for the federal government and the states to put their acts in order before the implementation of the law. And I'm surprised to hear the Attorney General coming out recently to say that there was no such moratorium. So the question is that if there was no such moratorium, what is stopping the uh, implementation of that judgment? Because the judgment was with immediate effect. The, the judgment said that with immediate effect, 
And three months down the line, we are still where we are. No concrete action has been taken by the federal government to make sure that those uh, things happen, though I'm aware that the president set up uh, a, 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 a committee to review and maybe put up the mechanisms for implementation. I'm also aware that a lot of the states in compliance and judgment have commenced conducting their local government elections, no matter how defective those elections are, that at least they are complying with to the extent of conducting local government elections. The area where we have not started seeing uh, any implementation is with regards to the funding where the Supreme Court judgment says money spent for local government should be paid directly into the accounts of those local governments. We've not seen any implementation to that effect, and I await the Attorney General of the Federation, who instituted the case in the first place, to tell us what is really happening and when that is going to take place. Other than the... Uh, so th this issue that you are raising now, um, what, what's... How does the people intervene? How do the people help? the system and the process. What can the people do? I think, yes, I think the judgment was greeted with fanfare. Nigerians celebrated that judgment. Everybody was happy and hope was very high that at least we were going to see something different. We were going to see implementation. And I must give it to them, the media and the civil society groups have been drumming and they have been asking for implementation of that judgment. I also know that uh, uh, public opinion, public uh, governance experts have also been calling for implementation of that judgment. But the boss, boss, uh, boss stops at the table of the federal government who has a responsibility to implement that judgment. Mr. President, I will hold responsible for that and the Attorney General of the Federation. All we can do as civil society groups is to continue to call for the implementation of that judgment by the box stops at the table of Mr. President. And I wonder why that has not happened. The committee that has been instituted, uh, uh, we have also gone relatively quiet. We've not seen anything. No report has been presented. And no specific action is coming from that end. And once the momentum, they allow the momentum to die, then it's going to be a big challenge because people will lose faith, people will lose confidence in the entire process, and at least the federal government really need to act, and the time to act is now. You, you don't see the, um, the, this move, this wave of state governments conducting local government elections as a plus towards the, to, uh, in that direction? I think it is. Like I said... The judgment is twofold. One is for all states to ensure the conduct of elections. That is one. And that is the responsibility of the states to so do. And we've seen the states complying to that extent. But the second part of the judgment is that money spent for local government should be paid directly to the accounts of the local government. And the person responsible for that, or the body responsible for that, is the federal government. So while the states are complying, we've not seen commensurate level of compliance from the federal government. And the, what we had initially was that they are putting the necessary mechanisms in place, the necessary structures in place. I wonder what kind of structure is required. All that is required is for each local government to set up their own statutory accounts, send their statutory accounts to the federal government, to the accountant general, who on a monthly basis is expected to credit the account rather than paying to the Joint Account Allocation Committee of the states. That July has come and gone, August come and gone, September has come and gone, and we are in October. October is also going. So we've not seen any commensurate implementation. So for me, the challenge right now is on the step of the federal government who has not commenced implementation. Mm. But the states, to their own extent, like I said, no matter how flawed the elections are, they are complying and they are doing their best to make sure that those local government elections are held. So maybe what we should be talking about after the election is moving downstream to see how we support and strengthen the local government electoral system. Well, talking about the you know going downstream, uh, was just not, not too long ago, the Lagos state government was talking about the fact that there are no plans to scrap the 37 local council development areas in the state, the LCDAs. And I think there are a number of other states in Nigeria have LCDAs. What's your take on, on that, uh, that arrangement, local government and uh, local council development areas? What, what should we be looking at? Is there progress? How, how does that affect this Supreme Court judgment? 
Okay, first of all, local government is supposed to bring governance nearer to the people, is to bring governance closer to the people, at the community level. And states like Lagos, with 20 local government, felt that the local government, the number of local governments are too few to be able to impact directly on the communities. So that was the essence of trying to create the additional 37 LCDAs to bring governance closer to the people and make more impact. But the approach that the state government took in creating the local government did not meet the requirements of the 1999 constitution. You remember when Mr. President was the governor of Lagos, you remember the imbroglio between the Lagos state government and the president around the recognition of the 37 LCDs as not meeting the constitutional requirement. Because for them to be recognized and draw revenue from the federation account, they must go through the entire uh, process as recognized by, uh, in Section 8 of the 1999 Constitution. 7 and 8, but unfortunately, uh, they didn't meet that, leading to the uh, withholding of the funds of Lagos State then. So what uh, the Lagos State House of Assembly has done now is, in compliance to the judgment, is now maybe downgrading those LCDs to now call what they call administrative councils. So they are now recognizing the 20 local government uh, areas, recognizing the constitution to be the 20 local government that are withdrawing revenue directly from the federation account, and now create downgrading them from local government development to now administrative councils. And the heads of those uh, councils will now be appointees of the state government, not elected officials. So I think that move is one, in the first instance, is in uh, compliance to the Supreme Court judgment. However, the other part of it is also recognition of the fact that now that funding will be going directly to the local governments rather than the joint account, it means that each local government will be managing its funds, unlike as it was where they were able to redistribute the funds from the joint account. But again, even though I've not read the details of that, I've not seen the, the bill, to read the details of that bill, I'm aware that one of the things they are trying to do is to now allow each uh, local government to now fund the administrative councils under its purview. But again, if you ask me, Lagos is a rich state. It has enough uh, uh, internally generated revenue. So even if the uh, monies from the federation account is not going to those local governments. I expect that the state government should be able to fund their LCDs, that is, if they don't want to scrap them, the LCDs directly from their internally generated revenue. If they do that, then they, are not, they don't run foul of the law. I remember during the public hearing, some people were also kicking against the abolition of these LCDs because they felt that they are bringing governance closer to the people and they are impacting on the lives of the people. So they didn't want them scrapped. So if they don't want that to happen, then they can fund them directly from the IGR of the states. But again, in their wisdom, uh, they felt that making them administrative council will better serve the purpose. So again, it's now left for legations to continue to engage and see how they strengthen uh, uh, those uh, sub-national governance systems at the grassroots level. How about, how about However, the... for now, based on that law, the 20 are based on the substituting judgment, only the 20 local governments are recognized so... by law. So in terms of funding then, what would be your suggestion? Because you, you made a valid point saying that uh, the idea of creating the LCDs, and it's not just in Lagos, I think one or two other states, I'm not sure mm -hmm. of um, Kano mm -hmm. State as well, have LCDs. So in terms of funding, what would be your recommendations? Like I said, if any state believes that they want to create more LCDs or administrative councils or administrative centers, whatever they want to call them, they can fund those local government, those centers from their IGR rather than withdrawing money from the federation, uh, monies that come from the federation account to those local governments. They can fund them from their IGR if they have the resources. And if they don't have, maybe they have now made them you know, within the administrative system, you have the local government. From the beginning, you have wards, you have local government, you have states, then the federal government. The wards are the uh, 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 closest administrative units to, to, to the communities or to the grassroots. So I wonder what difference the wards and the administrative mm. councils will be serving in this instance. But again, with regards to funding, any state that wants to, create or establish or sustain those administrative centers or councils or LCDs can fund them from their IGR if they so wish. But they cannot 
draw monies from those local governments to fund those local governments. However, based on the law passed by the local governments, uh, the, the, uh, the bill before the Lagos House of Assembly, uh, like I said, I've not read the details, what they are thinking about is to give responsibility to LG, each LGA to fund administrative centers under their own jurisdiction. How that we're going to pan out, I don't know. But the biggest responsibility will lie on the state who created them in the first place to fund them. Uh, what are your thoughts about um, states in which the, the party at the state level wins all the local government seats in those states? Uh, I think uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a big challenge. <laughs> and uh, again, it's part of our democratic uh, evolution. Now that we are saying strengthening local government systems, now that we are saying uh, strengthening uh, governance at the grassroots level, now that we are saying let those local governments be independent and funding should go directly to those local governments, every state governor will want to ensure that he has firm grips of those local governments. Because you know, for any governor to win election, for any political party to win governorship election, it must be in control of the local government. So it's more or less politics. Each state government, based on their own self-survival instinct, instincts, will want to control the local government at their own level. And unfortunately, the framers of the 1999 Constitution, believing that man is rational, believing that just like copying from other democracies, giving the responsibility to the states to conduct local government elections, thinking that they will rise above parochial interest, give them the power to conduct elections. But unfortunately... That has not been the case. Each state has now leveraged on that opportunity to ensure that they have control over the electoral process to ensure that their party wins. We've also seen situations where, uh, like what is happening in Rivers, what is happening in Kano, and what is happening in other states, ensuring that the process of appointing of the SEC, the funding of sex and everything is within the firm control of the state government. So there is no accountability within that process. There is no independence of those electoral bodies. So they dance to the whims and caprices of the government in power. And if that is the case, then our electoral system at the local government will continue to be that we accept one, the constitution is either amended to allow for INEP to conduct those elections, thereby creating some distance, or strengthen those checks in such a manner that they become independent, that that will take time. And I want mm. to give it the next four electro election cycles mm. where people will continue to build the capacity of those uh, CX to be able to conduct independent elections, but it's going to, not going to be uh, something that will happen in the short term. We have to look at the medium to long term, except that power is given to INEC to mm. conduct elections. And INEC for now has become a little bit uh, strengthen, even though they still have its own challenges. But I think comparatively, if INEC is conducting local government elections, as we saw in 1999, definitely it was going to be different. In 1998, it's definitely going to be different from what we are seeing at the, uh, at the states currently. Would it not be a bit um, untidy or even suicidal for um, somebody who is from another party, not from the party at the center, at the state level, if he wins an, a local government election in that state, would that not be a bit, um, no, um, I don't even know the word to use. <laughs> Suicidal? <laughs> no, I think, <clears throat> but, but we've, had, we've had examples of that in this fourth republic. You remember in the first administration of Governor El Rufai, he created an enabling environment for local government elections to hold. And we saw where PDP won some local government, uh, uh, local government in Kaduna. We also saw something like that in uh, Nasarawa State, where the opposition party won some seats. Heaven did not fall. But again, after the first time or the second time, no governor agreed to test that again or provide that enabling environment for that kind of a thing to happen. So it must take a reform-minded <coughs> governor to rise above you know, self-interest, to want to create lasting legacies to ensure that uh, systems functions, to ensure that there is free and fair elections, it must take a statesman to be able to allow that to happen. But the average politician that we have these days and the system that we operate, 
I want to believe that even if I made governor today, I'm not sure if I would want to maybe do things different than even if I wanted to. The party, my supporters, will not agree for me to allow that kind of open system because it's going to be suicidal and it may come, be counteractive. So it has to be a systemic change that must create that enabling environment. And that is why for some of us, we believe that maybe a central system, uh, electoral body conducting elections may do the magic. But again, when you talk to the state government, they will tell you that, look, we part of a federal system. So each state should be allowed to control their own uh, affairs. Some will also tell you that allowing the federal government or INEC to conduct local government election will now be allowing the federal government to have influence in the local government. So it's everybody protecting their own sp space. And it's that let, will continue to happen until systems are changed. Hmm. Let, let's talk about protecting the, the workers. One of the issues, we, you, you organized an engagement a uh, few weeks, uh, maybe about two months ago, where one of the issues discussed was salaries for local government workers, including uh, teachers at the local government levels. Um, what, what can you say, what's the upside? What, what are the risks to uh, look at? A kind of SWOT around funding of the local governments on the one hand and paying teachers and other workers, what are the issues and what are the things to look out for? Thank you, Ayo, for that very important question. But we must unbundle the issues. One, uh, maybe taking a cue from what I read from the uh, uh, Anambra example, I want to see that there is a presumption on the part of state governors who believe that local government chairmen, in quotes, in quote, are corrupt or they are inefficient, and if they are given resources, may not be able to manage those resources by themselves. I hear statements like maybe not going back to Egypt and reminding us of what happened uh, before 1999 where teachers were owed salary and believing that when you give local government chairmen the opportunities and the funding, they will mismanage those resources. And because of that, there must be some level of control. That is on one hand. The second part of it are structural issues, which find its root in the constitution. And that, again, will bring us back to what the Anambra example where I had Governor Soludi talking about the need for coordination, the need for joint funding, and the issue and the need for uh, uh, cooperation among the three tiers of government, saying that no particular tier is independent of the other. That, to some extent, is true. Because if you look at the Constitution, so, uh, in the uh, fourth schedule, Section 1 talks about the functions of local government, but when you come to Section 2, it talks about the participate that local governments shall participate in, on three issues. One, funding of uh, primary, vocational, and adult education in the provision, not funding, provision of adult, primary, and vocational education. Two, in the provision of health care. And three, the, on agriculture. So if it is participation, the question has always arisen, participation to what extent? What is the extent of the participation of local government? Who are the participants? What is the framework for defining that participation? And that is why today, primary education has been abandoned on local government by states and federal government to a large extent and use the resources of states of local government to pay teachers through the joint account allocation committee. With the judgment of the Supreme Court now funding going directly to primary school, to local government, the question now arises, from which post are we going to pay teachers? And remember, the teachers are not staff of local government. They are staff recruited by the states, and hmm. they are posted across the states. So no particular local government owns teachers. No particular local government owns health care workers. So who will pay them? From which post are they going to pay them? So the main thing to do from the structural perspective is the definition of roles of the local government with regards to funding of primary education, with regards to primary health care delivery and agriculture. What is the role of the states? What is the role of the uh, local government? And what is the role of federal government? Mm. And because of the absence of clear definition, you see that confusion. And that is why today you see federal government building primary health care centers at the local government level, mm. and nobody owns them. They are uh, non-functional because the local government will tell you it is not us.
Mm. It is a federal government. You know, uh, I, I, I hear, I, I, I see that we so still... those are all issues. Yeah, I, we, there's still a lot. I mean, you have already said it, that we should be looking at the next four election cycles at the local government. That's about 12 years, yes. gosh, before we are able to get to cruising level at the local government levels. That's, 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 yes. that's a tough one, so to speak. And um, so if I If we pay, are to go, if we are to remain... No, I think if that is if we are to go wait for the CX to continue to organize oh, and for, okay. to, the, for the to the point where they will be effective. I, 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 said. I am not but sure. It, it I, is now two constitutional amendments. Uh, yeah. it's a different thing. I'm not even sure that the uh, the INEC is very very happy to take on this burden. But hey, what do I know? I uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. <laughs> Truly appreciate your time, John thank Mutu you, is thank national you coordinator, so the yeah. Democracy Vanguard. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, we have spoken about quite a, a lot of things, and we're going into the lifestyle segment shortly. Uh, and we're talking about something that, you know, people say, uh, you know, we have a cancer in governance that's growing in a way that we don't want it to grow. Mm -hmm. So yes. we must find a way to, to nip to it in kill the bud. Kill it. Hmm? Gosh, it's not catfish. You know, to to want to kill it mm. at least oh by the way that word of the day caterwall caterwall mm. uh, you I haven't seen your text i haven't seen any message from you about caterwall what does it mean and what uh, use it in a sentence uh, i know that some people naturally want to use that word and in line with what we have been talking about uh, on, unless if you know someone in nigeria who Catawalls a lot. Not Let me. us know. Let us know. In the meantime, lifestyle is next.